have been waiting for social media at the top of the hour, 8 o'clock, but here it comes. Ohima Amaiza is standing by for Kakaki Social. Wonder what's trending. I could guess on that one, and I bet I'll be correct. <laughs> the Vice Presidential Debate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> good morning, Ohima. Good morning, Chico. Good morning, TV. And good morning, Nigerians. Welcome to Kakaki Social. We're live coming to you from AIT. I am Ohima Amaiza. On this segment of the show, we spotlight the issues shaping conversations in the Nigerian social media. Of course, the guest right was trending. The vice presidential debate held on Friday here in Abuja last week. And that issue has dominated conversations in the Nigerian social media. Uh, a lot of fireworks has been going on between the APC supporters and the PDP supporters in the Nigerian social media. There's been a flurry of comments. But let's go and take a look now at what actually transpired. The 2019 debate, the vice presidential debate, happened in Abuja on Friday. And uh, let's take a look at reactions. Uh, first of all, uh, we saw a tweet from the PDP presidential candidate, Atiko Abubakar. He tweeted, he said, I watched with pride as Peter Obi laid out our vision to get Nigeria working again. Can't wait for the presidential debate, hashtag 2019 debate. Uh, the PDP presidential candidate, Atiko Abubakar, uh, commending Peter Obi for doing a great job at the, press, at the vice presidential debate. Uh, uh, we also looked out for what President Buhari tweeted about his vice president who was also at that debate. But President Buhari didn't tweet anything. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, does that suggest that <laughs> he wasn't really pleased with the performance of the VP? Well, who knows? Henry Shi tweeted and said that uh, this is an unfair debate. Oshibajo should have been paired with market women. <laughs> That's savage. Henry Shi tweeting and uh, from Abdul Mumin Jibrin tweeting at Abdul ABMJ. It was a great debate. Peter Obi was looking good, but should have cross-checked many statistics he gave that were inaccurate. VP Oshibanjo was simply excellent. He was alert, on point, impressive, and brilliant all through. As if we expected less, prof plus sand. The rest were promising. At the moment, Jibrin tweeting there. Let's take a look at uh, this Twitter, Twitter user, Demola Victor TV. Peter Obi versus Prof Yemi Oshibajo should actually switch and be presidential candidates, while Atiku and Buhari should be their vice. Hmm. Retweet if you agree. Do you agree? Peter Obi and uh, Oshibajo should actually be the presidential candidates, and Buhari and Atiku should be the vice. Well, I don't know about that. To Mr. Banks or Michel Ray tweeting, I honestly think Prof Oshibajo is a brilliant individual, but on this debate, Peter Obi schooled him. I will not blame VP though. No matter how brilliant and sweet your mouth is, you can't market a bad product. This election is a referendum on what Buhari has done since 2015. From Bamikole Banks of Mishore tweeting there, Jonas Ezeanya tweeting at Dr. Clandestine. This Khadija woman was the flop of the night. Saddest part of it is that she is the running mate of a seasoned motivational and public speaker. Wonder how Feladro Toye felt last night watching his VP mate Shiva and Blab on that stage. Hmm. Nigerians are giving their verdicts on what exactly happened. And of course, Felad Rote and Kingsley Moalu had actually commended the performance of their running mates during the debate. Uh, Channels TV reporting said that 2019 debate at Tiku, Moalu, Durotoye praised running mates. But this Twitter user responding to that tweet said, uh, doing the stoic responding actually said, laugh out loud, Felatu is praising running mates. Okay, I'm happy Obi didn't praise her own because if now by debate, then suppose disqualify her whole party. Nigerians actually on the social media were not really impressed with the performance of the other uh, vice presidential candidates of the other candidates who participated in that debate, the vice presidential candidate of the ACPN, of the YPP, and of the ANN. Uh, from Twitter user Yemi Fe, I am highly disappointed in the vice presidential candidates of the third force parties, especially Obi's running mates. There's simply no third force anywhere. They are not ready. Yemi Fe tweeted <laughs> saying that the third force candidates are not prepared for this. Real NCNC tweeting said, when we say that some of these presidential aspirants are hired or paid, we mean every bit of it. None picked a credible running mate. As brilliant as Madam Obi is, she picked a man, Galadima, who single-handedly destroyed her ambition in one night. Their aim is to split votes. Of course, uh, Obi is a Kweseli's running mate, Galadima, uh, put up some quite of an appearance and a performance at that debate. It was uh, quite funny, some of the things he said and the way he said them. This Fidel tweet and said, Obi is a Kweseli's choice of VP candidate is disturbing. With what I saw tonight, I doubt Madame can put together a winning cabinet, except she didn't pick her running mate herself. And uh, talking about Obi is a Kweseli and the possibility that she is really quite disappointed right now at how 
her vice presidential candidate performed at that debate. This Twitter user, the great Genesis, said, Obvious equally when Galadima returns to headquarters after the debate. This is a picture or rather a video of what Obvious equally is going to do to Galadima when he returns from the debate. Let's take a look. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> OPS Equestly must be really disappointed with Galadima as uh, that video has portrayed to us. It, it's a season of political memes in the Nigerian social media. The 2019 election is upon us and trust me, you're going to see a lot of things, funny stuff. We're going to take a look at something very funny again right now. You recall, if you watched that debate, there was that moment Vice President Yemi Oshiba just stammered through what he was saying. Okay, let's take a look at what some Nigerians did with that. Uh, Royalty Uso. Let's go back, please. Let's go back, please, to... Let's go back, please, to the slide. Our, our technical guys are running ahead of us this morning. I don't know what's going on. We need to go back and take it slowly, guys. Slowly. Okay. <laughs> okay, from Royal Ati Uso tweeting said, uh, Where, where, where is Vice President Oshibanjo? Let's take a look at this video. Why this country is where we are today and why we are where we are. Where we are the minute where? It's because we have, we, we, we have, earned, we, we have currently spent 2.7 trillion in two budget cycles. That's why we are where we are. Where. You were where? Yes, you. Where we are. That's why we are. Here today. Do you want to finish all the we are now? Yeah. We, 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 we want to finish. Which we are will I not use? Which we are, which we are will I use? Do you want to finish? Okay, we are the share. Uh, 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 alone it's not easy to debate at all eh? it's not very easy <laughs> okay still in the season of memes meme central ng well you know uh, peter b loves china a lot he loves china i, I don't know if he has something to do with uh, donald trump donald trump also likes china uh peter b made a lot of references to china during the debate and uh, meme central ng which uh, seems to be like a platform that the apc uses on social media to propagate their content did this video they said peter b aka Hey Chang Lai <laughs> with a banger titled Son of China. Let's take a look at this video, Meme Central NG Design. Let me tell you. China, 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 Hong Kong, 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 China, 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 Please leave Peter Obi alone. Man is a businessman. Eh? Container has arrived. Eh? <laughs> okay, now it was also a night of fact checking at the vice presidential debate. Uh, so, who lied about what? Who was wrong about the claims they made? Uh, Nigerians also took their time to fact check that. Jobri A. Gawa tweeting at Mr. Jack said, The VP candidate of PDP, Peter Saint Obi, dropping fake information on national TV with full confidence without citing a source for his data. He attached some uh, images to that. Let's take a look at the fact checking that happened that night. Uh, some of the things Peter Obi said that has been disputed as not accurate. Let's go on to the next slide, please, and take a look at uh, some of the details of the fact checking. Claimed by Peter Obi, total loans from the banks in Nigeria is 19 trillion naira and only 0.5% goes to SMEs. 
It has been fact-checked as false. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN Money and Credit Statistics, banking sector credit to private, in, in, to private increased to 22.72 trillion naira at the end of October 2018. Compared with 22.56 trillion, it stood at the end of September 2018. Uh, so Peter B didn't get that right. And then let's take a look at that. another fact-checking. Uh, there was a claim by Peter B also during the debate said there are about 2 million vehicles in Nigeria that has been fact-checked as not correct. False. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria has a total vehicle population of about 11.5 million as at the third quarter of 2017. So Peter B got his facts wrong. But Vice President Oshibajo was also called out for making some very inaccurate statements. Uh, according to the articulated youth force tweeting at AYF 2019, a government of liars never again. Hashtag Oshibajo lied. But let's take a look at uh, some of the screen, uh, the images attached to that tweet that showed uh, the Vice President making those inaccurate statements. The lies. We produce 90% of the rice we consume. Yami Oshibajo at 2019 debate. The facts. Why direct imports have dropped, rice is smuggled into Nigeria, according to the United States Department of Agriculture, Foreign Agricultural Service, USDA, December 2018 report. Uh, so it's true, actually, a lot of the rice we consume in Nigeria is smuggled in from uh, neighboring countries. Uh, so that statement he made is not actually correct, that we produce 90% of the rice we consume. And also, the lies. Professor Yemi Oshibajo claimed the Buhari administration has built six tech hubs. The facts, they haven't. In June 2018, he said they will start with Lagos. Uh, so it was a night of fact-checking also at the 2019 uh, vice presidential debate. Uh, let's move on and take a look at uh, who won that very debate. Who won? Who won? I know you guys watching, you already have your decisions on who won, but we also conducted a social media poll. Kagaki Social conducted a poll while that debate was going on. Uh, after the debate actually went, uh, happened, who won tonight's VP debate? 14,742 Nigerians participated in that poll and 87% of the votes said Peter Abi won. On the poll conducted by Kakaki Social on Twitter, 13% said that Yemi Oshiba of the APC won that debate. Let's go on and take a look at uh, another poll conducted by The Voice of Nigeria. The Voice of Nigeria said, rate the candidates who performed best at the vice presidential debate. Uh, 7,238 Nigerians participated in that poll by Voice of Nigeria. 58% uh, said Peter Abi won. 38% said Yemi Oshibajo and 4% said Uma gets off the YPP. So again, in the Voice of Nigeria poll conducted on Twitter, Peter Abi won the debate on last Friday. Let's take a look at uh, another poll. Actually, Premium Times was also conducting a poll on Facebook and Twitter. Peter Abi was leading in that poll at 61%. A uh, lot of Nigerians had participated in that poll. But for some strange reason, just before the poll was conducted, uh, that poll disappeared from Facebook. Uh, Premium Times was also conducting that poll on Twitter. Let's take a look again at the Twitter poll Premium Times was conducted. Uh, this was the poll conducted by Premium Times on Twitter. Peter Abi again was leading at 57%. Yami Oshibajo at 39%. Khadija Abdullahi at 2%. Ganiyu Galadima at 1%. Again, this Twitter poll suddenly, just moments to the conclusion, also disappeared. I don't know if Premium Times has any reason for doing that. Uh, hopefully, they'll make an official statement on why they had to delete the poll uh, that was going on on Twitter and on Facebook on the vice presidential debate. We move on now from the vice presidential debates to the to this uh, issue that was also trending. The two spokespersons of the presidential campaigns of Atiku and uh, Buhari uh, had an interview with Al Jazeera. Uh, Mehdi Hassan of Al Jazeera's upfront actually had a chat with uh, Festus Keyamo, the spokesperson of the Buhari uh, re-election campaign. And of course, Rishay Gunshow me, the spokesperson of the Atiku presidential campaign. Let's take a look at how that development panned out. Why did Nigerian presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar send over $40 million in support? Suspect funds to the United States. Mehdi Hassan challenges a spokesman. Let's take a look at the video and a few comments that followed. But he does have a corruption question mark over him because there's this suspect $40 million that went into the US via offshore wire transfers that makes him look pretty bad. He may be innocent, but it doesn't look good for his image, does it? When he's running for president, when he's got this unanswered questions about $40 million being transferred into Listen, the US. Nigeria is a country that relies on foreign countries for a couple of things. That particular issue that you're talking about was at the time when my candidate was trying very hard to fund an American-style university in Yola called American University of Yola. And because he doesn't have all the money sitting in one account, he tried to get a lot of his business interests and some of what is due him from the numerous activities he has given that all his businesses were held in a blind trust 
and he bought that money there in trickles. Of course, people had issues with it. It was investigated. It was, it was clearly shown not to be proceed of crime. It was shown not to be proceed of anything that is untoward. They only queried it as they had a right to query it. We must be careful that we do not take small queries to mean grand and larceny or grand indictment. PDB provides a tangible explanation with facts. It will be preposterous of them to think the criminal allegations hanging over Atiku will go away. Nigerians are wiser to know that 2019 election presents unfortunate choices. And then we saw from Sly Bondo, Atiku's spokesman is very intelligent and apt. I like him very much. He's confident and a good communicator. I think foreign media should be the one asking these politicians questions. Medir Hassan also posed a question to Festus Keamo, asking him, President Buhari said he was going to end medical tourism uh, when he was campaigning to be president. But now he's president, he's going abroad for, abroad for foreign treatment, and Nigerians don't even know exactly what is uh, happening to him. And this was the question, should Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari apologize for promising to stop medical tourism when he has traveled abroad so many times for treatment himself? Medir Hassan challenges Festus Keamo. Let's take a look at how Festus Keamo responded. Should he apologize for having said that he wouldn't send government officials abroad for medical care and then going abroad himself at taxpayers' expense for medical care abroad? He never get, he never get a time frame for that. I, don't even, I can't even remember the particular time he made that particular statement. But you know, you have to rebuild infrastructure before you do that. In matters of health, you have to rebuild infrastructure. Because health is number one. And you don't expect people to die, not only him, any other person at all, in a state of health that is in a state of health that may be terminal, you may have to seek help elsewhere until we rebuild what they damaged before they left. Okay, let me ask you this. What did he go abroad to get help with? Well, I'm not his doctor, and so I can't sit down here and give you his medical records. I can't, I'm not his doctor. Why is it a secret for the president of Nigeria uh, to not share his health? Most leaders tell the public if they have a health problem. Why has he got a secret illness that he won't talk about? Because there's no political template and booklet anywhere in the world that tells you that you must share it. There's no political template or booklet anywhere in the world that says you must do so. Uh, the comments are on the tweet and said, uh, Festus Keamo unwittingly confirms President Buhari has a terminal disease. So, so careless. Uh, rest on the tweeting and then from SARS B67, I really feel sorry for Festus Kayamo. He has the most difficult job in the world, defending Buhari. From that issue, now we move very quickly as we wrap up Kaki Social this morning. Last week, I told you we were supposed to play you a video of what Duna Duke said about the PDP and Atiku Abubakar. We're bringing you that video this morning from Area Father who shared that video. Charlie Boy said, Here's one reason I tell you Atiku is not an option. Do you agree with Duna Duke? Let's take a look at what Duna Duke said. I've known Atiku. But this is beyond that. My problem is that even if I emerged as a candidate of PDP, I will not do well because the baggage that party carries and the culture of that party is inimical to Nigeria's growth. That's the truth. I know PDP. I'm a founding member of the PDP. Because if you're going to the PDP, if you want to deal with corruption, if you want to deal with corruption, right? There are so many toes you will thread on in the PDP. You will not be able to. So no matter what Atiku tells you, you can't do anything. Uh, that was from Donald Duke. The latest about him is that he's out of the presidential race, according to a court, a court judgment uh, which are granted uh, his presidential ticket in the SDP to Professor Jerry Gana. On that note, we wrap up Kakaki Social this morning. Please follow the conversation on all our social media platforms at Kakaki Social on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kakaki Social. I am Ohima Amaize. Once again, apologies for starting late this morning. We're battling with some technical issues. Kakaki Social returns tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Handy over back now to TV and Chikorinak. Thank you very much, Ohima. We'll see you later. Thank you. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we shall be looking at the electoral amendment bill with us in the studio as a senior special assistant to the president of National Assembly Martyrs Senate, Senator Itana, and of course, a member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Linus Okoria. The story does.